everybody and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host Scott Ramp. I'm here to talk about all sorts of things happening today. I got a new dub and stuff. I got some pre-critic. I got a special meeting from the uh, City County Health Department where they're talking about mandating masks within the city and county of Missoula. I'll talk a little bit more about that in my report, but let's kick off some things within the news. Uh, part of that uh, mask re requirement comes at the heels that Missoula has jumped to 58 active cases of COVID, making the sum total of 126 is Missoula. And of course, that number is based on the figures on Thursday. Um, but that's kind of where we're at right now. Montana passed the 1,000 um, mark, and many health officials around the state are looking to stop further spread. Um, as always, people... Uh, who do have who have um, come into contact with people uh, are asked to quarantine themselves for 14 days, but also to uh, reset the clock as soon as they sh uh, have any symptoms of uh, COVID-19 as well. Um, let's see, um, let's see. Montana uh, has also released plans for uh, kind of a hybrid school year for 2020-2021 for in-person and online type pilot programs. Um, kicking things off is this includes social distancing and limiting classroom trips throughout the schools. This is a new system in place drafted by Governor Bullock's team and Superintendent Elsie Arnettes, um in Montana. Uh, uh, in larger urban schools, uh, particularly middle schools or high schools, smaller groups of students may in a single classroom for the entirety of the day where teachers who uh, would teach specific subjects would travel between classrooms. In elementary schools, um, half of the students might come to class for a couple days to maintain social distances and have smaller class sizes, while the other half will come uh, for the next couple days as well. Um, when kids are not in school, they'd be doing some kind of remote work from home. Uh, most schools have uh, have smaller enrollment um, within the state of Montana. There's a lot of small schools where they're seeing a decline in enrollment, where a lot of these schools can go to school as per usual with small classrooms. Uh, the federal government allocated $40 million to the state of Montana for school uh, this year for impacts of COVID-19, but school officials in Montana are guessing that that won't be enough. Education leaders in, said that schools across the nation may need more than $200 billion in new federal education funding to stop these gaps and meet the new needs. Um, the House passed a bill in May with a $58 billion for school districts, and the Republican-controlled Senate has not yet acted on it, though the President, Donald Trump, has uh, recently weighed in heavily in favor of reopening schools. Many schools will have some attendance uh, turn into a kind of a block schedule where half the kids will go for two days a week and the other half will go three days a week and then it'll flip based on the week after that. Um, with the U.S. being on the spiking up again in COVID cases, many other schools across Europe and Asia are able to reopen with the low numbers continuing. Uh, back to school, but, but, but not back to normal is what Americans will see this fall. And that concludes what's happening kind of in and around the world. Schools, COVID, and everything's being really kind of affected, and there's just a lot going on. Um, but here are a couple new programs. If you guys are going to be staying in, hanging out a little bit more, you can watch some of the programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. Here are some of those programs. Every time he stayed longer and longer and longer, and he, the women always told him, you need to go back, you need to go back. And, and he never listened. He stayed longer. Pretty soon, the environment started changing. And the water receded and receded and receded. And finally, he got, it got to a point where he got stuck. And this is where he lays forever now. And it just really made me think about the story and how how indigenous knowledge and western science are actually identical um, is one of them strong enough that you would be able to identify every girl that's at risk by just using one instead of all three because it was a bit onerous to um, track all three and tally up those numbers but we did see that a lot of the girls were ranking two or more factors as being necessary. They did say that coursework performance was the most significant. And they said that if a girl isn't performing, even if she's attending, but she performs poorly, that means she's not able to study at night. She doesn't have the support or the social system to really support her. So we found that interesting, that attendance was not really the most powerful predictor of dropout. 
So in the late 1980s, James Hansen became the first scientist to offer unassailable evidence that burning fossil fuels is heating up the planet. In the decades since, the world has warmed, the ice has melted, and the wildfires have spread. I'd like to start with a few excerpts from a recent Rolling Stone interview with James Hansen, the world's leading climate scientist, about the situation we find ourselves in. Quote, in the US, we didn't face up to the dangers of World War II until we were forced to, and then we did a lot. But in this case, it's particularly difficult and crucial because of the inertia of the climate system and the fact that the climate system gains momentum, and you've got to stop that. Now, when I showed you that picture and you look at this, you can say that's a disturbed urban system, right? No question that there's disturbance that's happened there. Um, so something has changed. There's some change in the minimal structure of that system. And remember that I said that I think structure in urban systems is also very much tied up with infrastructure. And so if we think about it, the components or the minimal structure of that system has elements of the ecological, biophysical domain, elements of the technological, infrastructural domain, and elements of the social and behavioral domain. So some people may have been hurt by this, and that is a change to the minimal structure of the system. So we're using this framing, which we call the sets framing, in our work, um, thinking about interactions between all three of these domains uh, in the work that we're doing. And there are a few papers that have come out um, that sort of lay out this sets framing, if you're interested in looking at that. Well, 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 we're back here again, and it's time for a little thing called Pre-Critic. Yes, this movie is Greyhound. No, it's not the travel bus, but it is about a, a boat and a boat captain other, or an admiral. It's just, This is during World War II, so you got World War II, check. You got Tom Hanks, check. Um, but not say, but he's not necessarily saving Private Ryan, but also not saving this movie um, about a captain, not Phillips, as he navigates German U-boat infested waters on his way in and out of CGI full movie that has only practical shots inside the boat while other things happen. Um, anyways, expect a lot of action and tension built in this film that fishes for folks who love learning more about World War II through the prism of Hollywood. Ken Burns does World War II better. Documentaries are pretty good, just so you know. Uh, but let's take a seed of truth and plant a tree of BS. Also, this movie is called... Greyhound, so there's that. Up next, we got a comment of a comedy uh, of about a young lady who uh, probably one crazy night emails her uh, love interest and says a lot of embarrassing stuff about how much she loves him and has to go down to Mexico, uh, which is why this movie is called Desperados. Um, and completely forget anything about. Desperados, because you think that this might be just like one of those movies uh, that, um, uh, what's his face made? Um, like Machete and all that stuff. Uh, Robert Rodriguez. It's not a Robert Rodriguez movie, just so you guys know. But watch Desperados, a title which will confuse you as a glimmer of hope that the main star is able to cross the border to change her fate. But a bunch of gags, bad sneaking around, only to find the person, only in the end for the love interest to read the letter, uh, and become like, ooh, she really does like me. Or if they introduce another guy in this movie, it's guaranteed that this guy will be the um, I'll settle with you guy. Because the guy that I like turned out to be a jerk for some reason. Blah, 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 Desperados coming out this weekend as well. Um, another thing that's already out, but I just wanted to hype, harp on a little bit more, is as we're moving into the 2020s, we're starting to notice that we're starting to see a lot more nostalgia Leave the 80s, which, you know, is still really prevalent, but 90s nostalgia is coming into frame. And this comes with, at a reboot of The Babysitter's Club. Remember The Babysitter's Club? It lasted like one season, and maybe they had ma had to make like a movie or whatever. Or they made the movie, and then they came out with the series. But anyways, what becomes a mafia within a competitive world of championship babysitting rehashes a 90s show. Yes. We are getting to the out of 80s nostalgia for the beginning of 90s property that ran for only one season... This is about a group of girls, minus the traveling pants, you should really see the traveling pants movie, um, 
it is delightful. Anyways, anyways, blah, blah, blah. Babysitting business gets too real in a show about friendship and discovering what it's like to care for children as parents go out and make more babies, The Babysitter's Club. And that concludes your pre-critic. I have a Mickey Rooney movie for you guys that I dubbed over, and this is called Quicksand. And then when I come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about what the city and county, or all of Missoula, is going to be doing in terms of mandating a mask requirement right after this. <laughs> Slow down, you crazy. I wonder what that was about. Oh, back to work. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm looking for a car mechanic. Well, I believe you came to the right place. I want to make this real quick. I need an oil change on a vehicle that does not have oil in it. Uh? Would that be possible for you to do an oil change? Uh, yeah. I guess I could. Now don't yank my pantyhose. I want to know exactly how you're going to do it without oil. Well, it's really quite simple. You put oil in and you take oil out. It's that simple. As you may already know, this was a test and you've passed. Good job. I am very impressed by your customer service. Oh, jeez, don't tell me this is one of those undercover boss situations. I'm a boss. I've never seen that show. Anyone with eyes have seen that show. Well, I follow more on the lines of a critic than a, um, uh, undercover boss type. I'm writing an article about you. Hmm. Well, still, this wasn't unfair to ask me these kind of questions. Well, don't you see? You're going to be in the newspapers. Newspapers are a dying medium. Hmm. Well, we do have an online blog. Perhaps that would help you in your businesses in the future. The only people who read blogs are women between jobs and nothing better to do. Exposure is all you need for business. I think I expose myself plenty of times to plenty of people. Self-exposure seems very desperate. And in these times, you need help to expose yourself, you see? I could use help exposing myself. If I have your consent, I'll be publishing this in our monthly magazine. Monthly? And with this exposure, you'll get tens of hundreds of people to come to your auto shop. Does that sound good? Uh. I'll take your silence as a yes. <laughs> Hello and welcome back. Kicking off Thursday at around noon was the city's reaction to the surge of Montana's COVID-19 cases that have reached triple digits overall. Um, 60 active cases and their close contacts are being quarantined currently. Uh, the rapid increase across the state has City County Health Department meet with City County staff and elected officials in this particular meeting. Um, in more recent public health updates, people traveling from out of states have not been causing the sur sudden surge in spike. That's a misconception that a lot of people have been passing along here as well. But many of the cases that were confirmed were from locals when they go to certain family gatherings and clusters. Um, just something important to point out that this is not this is uh, this sudden spike is within the community and has nothing to do with people coming into town from what those tests have proven. Um, this meeting will work through a mandatory mask proposal from the city county health department. And here is Cindy Farr with the current stats of where we're sitting at in terms of COVID-19. Um, we had 126 cumulative, cumulative cases. Um, 56 active cases, 510 close contacts currently, which is up about 200 since yesterday. That number was updated this morning. So if you look at this chart here, uh, you can see that we've got COVID-19 cases by age, and the vast majority of our cases are in people that are under the age of 40, um, which is generally pretty good because that one thing that that means is that you know generally people under 40 are very healthy and so they're not having poor outcomes from this disease and so we're glad that we're able to keep it out of our older um, adult populations at this time. So far they're able to see all close contacts and are able to identify those cases based on clusters and workplaces uh, of course, the majority being workplaces. And of course, you probably heard in the news that uh, there were a couple of places, uh, Stegrin Ox and also um, Paradise Falls, um, which recently started to reopen once again. Um, so those are a couple of the places that have kind of done this as well. But 
Um, let's talk a little bit more about public health, and Ellen Leahy talks a little bit more about the mandatory mask proposal in detail. I am today recommending that the Missoula City County Board of Health adopt the proposed rule for a required mask or face covering rule. Um, and in companion to that, after this hearing, depending on how the board amends or does adopt, I will also use the authority of the health officer under Title 50 to adopt a health order matching that rule. That authority also comes with the duty to control the spread of communicable disease, and that's a lot of what this whole pandemic is about. So we would be using all of our Title 50 authorities to try to improve the mask use in the community. What the City County Health Department wants to do is that they want to encourage wide use of masks and many businesses did ask the public health officials to help enforce this. What this means is that the City County will put a rule into effect upon upcoming city and county meetings. Um, this is necessarily actually um, rehashing it back. Um, this is a rule that will be put into place that will affect businesses and will not affect the individual. Um, Ellen talks about trends in new cases, and this is what she had to say. At our first small spike of cases on the left side of this EPI profile, the um, vertical lines that you see, the second one in is when we were given the governor's shelter in place order. And as you can see, those cases did not continue to spike up. Then the phase one reopened. There were no cases by that time. We had smothered the disease. There was no eruption of disease from phase one until we were well into phase two. And then as you can see to the right, we are having a spike. I believe this is the a spike that will continue into a higher number of cases. And in fact, because it takes a week to two to show up, you can't even see all the cases that are currently incubating at this time. So while we were closed down and first opening, we were all staying um, apart and the disease couldn't spread. And this, we can't, we can't stay closed down forever, but we also can't get real close together in the normal fashion. So masking, distancing, reducing spread, and sanitation are the tools that we have. Those are our tools. We are currently really lacking in masking. And so therefore, we propose this rule. Public health officials have been beating this information over people's heads for the past couple months. Wear masks, wash your hands. Ellen also mentions that vaccines are on trial, um, but keeping these rules in place will help buy us more time moving forward, um, prevent spreading, and also prevent the need for so many uses for vaccines and potential cures um, for this virus. I actually... You know, if you really think about it on a biology perspective, um, just looking up the, the finer details of viruses, if you have a virus, you kind of have it forever. And then you just have the antibodies in your body that are formed from the virus. I don't want to talk too much about it as well, but viruses is something that you kind of live with forever. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about um, where to wear masks. Here's Ellen once again. With these four conditions, anywhere in Missoula County, Indoors is the second condition. Indoors in a place where the public is either required or invited to attend, and I put a bus there to show you this includes public transportation and ride services. And for anyone 12 or older, then the requirement applies to you. You must wear a mask in that situation. So far, this was a soft plea, but now we're getting into the harsh brash tax of things. The ability to cancel events and close down buildings if they pose a risk to public health have been put into place by this um, public health department. Of course, I'm paraphrasing in the sense this is to regulate indoor space and not individuals. They are specifically wanting to make it perfectly clear that this will not force individuals. You won't get a ticket for, wearing a, for not wearing a mask. But they are also putting a little more uh, heft onto businesses to, to enforce this. So basically, uh, no shirt, no shoes, no mask, no service kind of deal. And they have the right to refuse service for people not wearing masks. And that's just kind of the deal with uh, the city county health department because it's kind of like them holding the stick over uh, businesses and nonprofits within the city saying that, hey, um, 
you're not following these health gun regulations to curb the spread of COVID, we're going to have to close you down. And if you prove yourself like you're doing a good job, we'll have partial reopenings and move on from that. So that's basically the kind of roundabout it. They go into a little more detail about it. They talk about this for like 10, 15 minutes, but I'm just kind of paraphrasing. You guys can check it out as well. Um, this is to put more liability on businesses and public space operators than individuals that refuse to wear masks. Ellen Leahy, once again, talks about kids that don't fall, have to follow the masks if they are under 12 years of age. 12 is not a, a magic number in terms of evidence related to the effectiveness of the mask. It's just a much more practical number for that, for that purpose. I don't have evidence either way that children are super spreaders. Um, so I, I, I do want to point out that there are a lot of settings that children are in that would be covered by this. So that would bring both more protection in those settings and also um, more practical considerations for those settings in order to comply. So really we went with 12 because that is our first stab. We're looking at indoor places in our community and we were just looking at what others have had a little bit of experience with. And now we're going to go be talking a little bit more about schools. Schools are going to be back in a big shift with kids going to school. And as I said in my earlier report, is that Montana has released a proposal for in-class education with students doing mixed at school and pilot learning. Um, like I said, teachers um, would travel between classrooms rather than the students traveling to the many different classrooms around there as well. Um, you can look up this PDF um, proposal from the uh, governor. You just go look up go. Uh, Bullock Schools, Steve Bullock Schools, and you can find the whole PDF plan for Phase 1, Phase 2, Phase 3 in terms of how the schools are going to be opening. Of course, I'm getting off track. Let's get back into public feedback. So Mary Parrish, she's Public Information Officer with the Public Health, and she summarizes the 2,577 public comments, which they talked about, and I'm, I, I edited this a little bit more so you can get a little more statistics and get a little bit more balance on this. So here's Mary Parrish talking about the informational stuff about how people feel about having a rule for wearing masks. We see that 87% of city residents were proponents and 13% were not. We see that 67% of county residents were, pro were proponents of the proposal and 33% opposed. Of all city, all county residents that commented, of the whole there we have 2,142. <clears throat> you see 81% are Proponents, 19% are opposed. So why are the proponents for this? Why are opponents against it? This is, again, just a general sense of, after having looked through all of the data, um, kind of the things that rose to the surface. So proponents were really citing scientific evidence, uh, as well as this is kind of indicating that, hey, this seems to me like something that's minimal, minimally invasive, relatively easy. It's the kind, respectful thing to do to keep COVID in check. And when we look at the opponents, again, they're um, citing scientific evidence for their reasoning um, to oppose the, the proposal. And um, this is from me, this is my interpretation as a community health specialist and an educator and a researcher. Some of these seem very valid, that they were concerned for folks with pre-existing conditions, mental health conditions, so on and so forth. And I would say I'm pretty sure that there is lots of flexibility in this rule for those folks with pre-existing health conditions. Mary went into more detail from the business nonprofit sector in Missoula, which mostly supported it, of course, minus daycare facilities. One of the biggest concerns about daycare facilities is like, how can you enforce a two or three year old to wear a mask? And also a lot of times um, they're basing this off of uh, how other policies in other towns and other states are saying that uh, children to and under should not be wearing masks. They should not have anything obstructing, uh, obstructing their breathing pass passages. So that's one of the things that they wanted to make sure in place. But also 12 and under is some of those things that they kind of dove a little bit deeper in terms of this. Um, but of course, there was a lot of data from public comments from both sides. Many organizations are all for wearing masks. Daycare facilities, either hardline, yes, they would require masks, and a lot of them said, no way, this is not good. There's no way we can keep these kids to wear these masks. 
But so far, two-thirds of the comments from the Missoula County and City were to have face mask requirements. Most of the, proponent, the opponents to this face masks were saying that it, it, is, um, it infringes on civil liberties, and since our numbers, our numbers are so low within the city of Missoula, it kind of seems unnecessary. Those are some of the opponents for it as well. Of course, long meeting short, this mask addition would reflect on businesses and places of gatherings. Um, this is a complaint driven, which would have health officials meet with owners and educate them with the last resort with uh, closing and partial reopenings of these businesses and nonprofits later down the line. Uh, for, for more information on this meeting and moving forward on this as well, you can search for the health department. To watch this meeting, you can find out more on MCAT.org or find these live streams um, YouTube via City of Missoula and MCAT. Um, what else do I have for you guys? Um, I don't have much else for you guys, so I'm going to take a quick uh, breather. MCAT is Missoula's community media resource. MCAT offers equipment like camera rentals and training like instruction and distribution help like cable TV channels, starting your own YouTube channel, a short clip for Instagram or Facebook. MCAT helps people who want to make TV shows, social media clips, and podcasts. In our new home in the Missoula Public Library, MCAT will be offering classes in camera use, getting the best sound and lighting quality, how to use a multi-camera studio with green screen and other special effects. In addition, we will be teaching video editing on popular platforms like iMovie, Final Cut Pro, and Adobe Premiere. For kiddos, we offer animation classes along with other multimedia activities for after school, during the weekend, and summer camps. MCAT has been serving the Missoula community for over 30 years with the material and the guidance to let your creative side blossom in audio-visual video. Be sure to visit us on the first floor of the new Missoula Public Library. So I just wanted to say uh, thank you guys once again for joining me. Uh, MCAT's kind of... Um, adjusting our schedule as well to um, better reflect and how have, have people being able to check out our check out our equipment uh, we have a promo that we just uh, released as you just saw just a second ago um, it's just one of those things that we need to make sure that um, you know as we're going into the, to the new public library that the public library as a social gathering place is up to snuff when it comes to wearing a mask and also um, people who work there, including myself, which will be working there as well in the public, um, would be wearing a face mask as well. So it's just some of those things that are kind of uh, iffy for right now, but for, for, for what I know is that the public library does plan to open in September. Um, they're hopefully uh, going to be able to kind of have social distancing platforms. One of the big things about it even before COVID really hit is that they already have things in place to kind of prevent um, um, too much shoulder to shoulder um, type stuff. They're going to have um, laptop kiosks for individuals who are able to actually take out the computers and use them for um, uh, personal use, they can go anywhere in the library, which is a good since they won't have any kind of uh, shoulder to shoulder kind of type computer lab set up. So there's uh, already kind of like things in place even before COVID-19 happened. Um, so that's some of the things that this, the, the library is also looking forward into. Um, a lot of times it's really hard to really think about washing books as well, but I'm not an expert. I can't say anything about that. And I think that it's uh, also important that... Um, just kind of giving you guys an update on what MCAT does for the community. For many of you out there who, who uh, doesn't know what MCAT is, um, it, we're a public access station here within the city of Missoula. Um, we represent a kind of a, a niche voice, UHF kind of radio station, which provides uh, programs for people within the community. Also provides um, a new thing, which wasn't necessarily part of the public access, which public access is just like, you come in and do your show. In our case, we've built up kind of a staff where we go out and we should go out and shoot community events, causes, rallies, lectures, you name it, all that kind of stuff, as long as they represent nonprofits and uh, civic organizations within the within the 
the guys of Missoula. So we're all about Missoula, super local, super everything. If you want to get involved, you can call us at 542-6228. But most of our involvement is kind of uh, outside sources. But if you wish to submit any programs, and let's say you have a YouTube channel and you want to air on MCAT, you can submit those programs by going to MCAT.org. And uh, speaking of programs, I do have a program I want to present to you, and this is a highlight from Dude I Just Zoomed, which is a kind of a pilot series that we've been kind of launching. This is actually like episode six, I believe, and uh, this kind of reflects uh, some of the th things that we've kind of invented in a way by utilizing online resources such as the Zoom to be able to meet and also participate in a, a drawing competition. So without further ado, and to end my show, uh, here is Dude I Just Drew, or Dude I Just Zoomed, Episode 6 Highlight in Four Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and take care. Um, I'll see you next week. Hey, whoa. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Dude I Just Zoomed here with uh, our drawer, Lily, right? Lily's our artist. Me. I'm going to be the one who drews. Yeah. And and me, I'm gonna draw too. You're and gonna we're be gonna the watch. Drewer. Yeah. Yeah. So as you guys might remember, the rules are fairly simple: three rounds. It's zoomed. And flip a coin to see who goes first. We each get five minutes to draw it. And we take a suggestion from Graham. I think you're the one giving out suggestions, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. That's about it. Yeah. So let's let's draw. Okay, we'll judge them at the end. Let's do this. The first suggestion is the spirit of the mushroom. Oh my god, this that's, is that's wonderful. Pretty, that's pretty super epic. spicy. Nice. Wow, look at him, little man. Oh. He's angry. So to get, to give this a little more realism, everyone just look to your left. Okay, everyone. Wait. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Everyone's I'm... stupid. Everyone look to your left. <laughs> everyone everyone looks... looks to the right. <laughs> even though it's even though it's mirrored. Well, like physically to your left because it's mirrored. Oh, that's a good drawing. Huh? He doesn't look like a fun guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> He's so spooky! <laughs> That's the noise he makes. I swear, if, if uh, none of you draws a uh, mushroom cloud, I I'm just gonna like say you need to you can win. Well, I'm. W w uh, that is not how this game works, sir. That's not how this game works, so now, <laughs> now Lily can't do it because he's said it. <laughs> He's painted. <laughs> you will just have to see what we draw, sir. Yeah. And if you don't like it, you can, you can go draw somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> Rowan, did you just sign before you were finished? Yes. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> is this it? There it is. Mushroom spirit. Right. Guys, I, uh... I got toast. Oh! <laughs> Mushroom time. Whoa, there's some thick lines. Wait, Whoa. Um, well, was Rowan's uh, uh, mushroom a fun guy? No. Stop, I are, I've already made that joke. It is, I'm gonna it is done. Think you could just say the joke? You think you could just say it right here, right now, huh? Whoa, did that uh, mushroom, oh, it's a mushroom goose? <laughs> mushroom goose? <laughs> it's a, it's a goose. It's, it's ascending from the mushroom dead guy. It's a bagoo. Uh oh. No! Big... Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> you killed me! You don't do that when I'm drawing! I can't draw good when when you yell at no! Come on! What nice. are you doing? Who's okay. the killer? Is it you, Lily? <laughs> it could be. You better watch it. Well, then who's that? Well, then who's, who'd you kill then? Oh, What's up the stars? stars. <laughs> Where did the stars come from? <laughs> Are we gonna have to make this PG-13 now? Maybe. I don't know. Wait, I'll change the blood color. <laughs> like in, uh, Dungan Rampa. You don't know if it's blood. 
What happened? Um, did, they, did they stab his belly? And he got bedded. <laughs> Bleeding mud. Bleeding uh, mud. Dirt. He's a mushroom. His 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 blood is a thing. Okay, <laughs> no, leave me alone. They're birds, I think. Okay. <laughs> Is this oh my god, will you stop? <laughs> I am, I am wow. an artiste, okay? I'm an artist. Artiste, please stop. Just let a woman draw Time's and up. they're bats, you uncultured swine. Time's up. Pretty epic. I mean, I've set the scene and I have toast, so obviously I'm wearing Okay, I just put together Scott's two messages, so sympathize each other, the Simpson. What? <laughs> what? Do Simpsonize another one. Other. I don't like that one. You have to turn each other into a Simpsons character. Hmm. I, I thought you meant like, like to turn each other into Simps. That's what I thought. You meant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know how to turn Rowan into a Simp, and it, it definitely involves it definitely involves a short skirt. That's for sure. This is gonna be really bad, and I apologize. <laughs> This is gonna be amazing. There it is. I'm trying so, to remember how the Simpsons look, and it's a little bit of a struggle. Hmm. <laughs> it kind of does have a little yeah. work to him. There he is. Oh, yeah, perfect. He has this, like, mm hmm. You know, you, you uh. can't dress. Oh, and he has dimples. <laughs> that's, that's great. He, he kind of looks like. Oh, there's, there's the hair. <laughs> There's drink. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I dig it back. Is Rowan yellow face? They're by offending bananas. I offended the bananas around here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whoa. Green. Green circles. <laughs> I yeah. need what is this? It's a shirt. God damn it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Yeah. Gosh, dang it! Gosh, did did got golly, did, gosh. Where's his arms? Oh. Don't don't even talk about his arms. Stop. I don't have any arms. Stop. No, Rowan has arms. the right to bear arms. No. Oh. <laughs> Leave his arms out of this. Doesn't deserve leave my arms. leave my rights out of this. Cause time's up. No. Oh, wait. it's like a thumb <laughs> puppet or whatever. It looks like a finger puppet. Simp. Simp. <laughs> That's all I had time to write. Simp. <laughs> More like. Why are you trying to make Dude. her everyone Homer Simpson? Just make them <laughs> <laughs> person. It's because I know That's how, how to they draw. are. That's how, how they. That's, that's how, how they, they are. are. That's that's all. That's these. how they are. That's all they look like. That's all of them. Just make it look like she has hepatitis or something. No. <laughs> oh dear God. <laughs> I don't like this already. <laughs> I take it back. I take back everything I've ever said ever. Don't forget the tie dye shirt. Put the hand. Wow. Look at it. it's me, but a simp. But uh, but it's fam. <laughs> <laughs> but Sam, and like Lily, Lily like, looks super surprised. She's like, "Whoa, I'm a simp." It's like, "Wow, why do my hands look look like this?" <laughs> <laughs> my hand is so huge. My hand is so big. <laughs> oh, like, her hands not her hands not big. It's just coming at you because she's slapping people. Slapping yeah. Right. Wow, it's me, uh, Simpson. <laughs> the there yeah. <laughs> yeah. we go. That was actually fun. I like drawing like this. Brian the Brain. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Brian with the brain. Brian has a brain, or is he the brain? The world may never know. He is the brain. I'm, I cannot answer that question for you. Wow. Look at like it. Is it a brain or is it a booty? I mean. It's looking the pretty brain. caked up. Girl, them lumps look good. Ryan got hella <laughs> cheeks. Hella cheeks of knowledge, dog. Ooh. Wow, like... look at him. He's a sophisticated man. Oh yeah, he kind of looks like Arthur. 
Yeah. One arm is bigger than the other, dog. No, his clothes are really big. His hands are well, okay. He's so one hand is bigger than the other. He's Looks a baby. Like he's got, like, two faces. Is Brian. Brian. Wait, whoa, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Brian, I mean. He looks like, like a. He looks like a baby. He's like, hey, everybody. He's oh. a little man who's got lots of knowledge. Here we are. Is he going? Is he going in a box? He's going to see a city man? Walking around. <laughs> is he getting in a school? I don't know what he's that is. School? He actually just graduated. He's a graduate. Oh, oh my god. Did he he's have so smart. Too? He has he's his a... bachelor's. <laughs> I like to, I'm thinking this in my brain. Uh, yeah, in my, in my Brian. That, um... <laughs> <laughs> that, um... He's just, he's not even like moving, not like moving with his legs, he's just like sliding across the floor through town. It's just like <laughs> wet skid. That's, that's what it feels like yeah, it would sound like. like, just like... Just... He's concentrating too much on the scenery, not enough on the, the character design. <gasps> it's gonna be some points off. Roasted. That's gonna be some, gonna be some points <laughs> off or something. <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> you got some points off, dog. And um, yeah, brain, 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 brain. Little, little wrinkly brain. He's got he's wrinkles. A little, he's a little dude who graduated. Now he's gonna go off and do exploration. Is that really a brain? Now is that really a brain? That looks more like a shirt. I'm gonna show <laughs> you a brain, dog. <laughs> Observation skills to the max. I'm using what Grover taught me. Sesame Street. Whoa! What's he doing? What's what's uh, Brian up to? I like Lily. that. You you really stepped up, Lily. I'm impressed. Thank Brian. you. What is Thank Brian you. up to? It is supposed to be Brian. Okay, I'm Don't. done. Wow. All right, and now it is time to judge. He's. he's I, want, I want to say that Ron no took a huge leap in a risk by actually drawing a setting. <laughs> but Lily's just, like has eyes and it's sassy and it's just like, hey, I'm hey cool. guys, I made it. Not a briefcase. It has like a Your colored dad. shirt. Like I like where you like at the bottom piece of it, like right here. The shirt's like popping out of the sweater. It's yeah, really I put genius. detail. It's voice. breaking the fourth wall as well, staring breaking. at you. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, grab the final one. Ron, I am proud of you for executing your setting. But I think I would give it to Lily for the Ooh, one. Yes! <laughs> Lily for the oh! win! Oh my god! Oh I want to thank my parents. I want to thank my education. I want to thank all the people that have supported me in my life. And I want to oh, thank, 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 thank Brian. I want to thank Brian. Man, Brian the me. Brain. You took me there. Uh, wow! Welcome to the bonus intro. Uh, we're here with Lily and Rowan once again. Hey, guys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks again. Me it's my good to be here. here. Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. Rain. Wow. Wow. Um. That's really <laughs> exciting bonus round. How about we, uh, how about we don't do that? Graham, I need you to take that suggestion and like literally tear it up in front of the screen. Okay. Like, yeah. This is what I think about this. Wait, yeah, wait. Yeah. Have the oh, oh my goodness. Oh. No. <laughs> the bonus round is so good. That's what I think about that bonus round. Here's the actual bonus round. <laughs> that was angry, just the fake one. That was like the fortune cookie of bonus round. Right yeah. There. An angry Karen's final form. Oh, yes. Yes, I all I agree with this. Oh god, I wanna go first. Ah Oh, whoa. <laughs> oh this is spooky already. Is she a ninja turtle? Ooh. 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 I feel like we're kind of we're gonna kind of go the same route a little bit. Ah. Whoa, it was <laughs> triceps? Ooh. Mm. Well, baby. That's because she's been clutching all those Walmart bags for days, because, <laughs> waiting to do her return. And just and refusing to wear a mask. And, uh, yeah, refusing to wear a mask. I, I really, like, you should, when you draw the other arm on the other hand, it's like her, the mask that she's crumpled up in her hand. 
<laughs> Coronavirus doesn't exist. Coronavirus it's doesn't a exist. It's a hoax. I, I have a medical condition. <laughs> I can't I breathe. breathe. I can't wear anything on my face. Everything Mount Rushmore water. can suck my butt. Honestly. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, whoa. Okay, cool. whoa. I said it. Whoa. I said it. You just... That, I mean, a mountain with presidents on it. Karen, ultimate form, I mean, what would you pick? <laughs> Honestly, I know what I would pick. But... <laughs> Rowan really likes his details in his comic books, for sure. I love, the, I love those <laughs> in details. Your, in your little magazines. In my little magazines. <laughs> <laughs> <Even> magazines. <laughs> you, like, you like a lot of color in your magazines. <laughs> you like a lot of that color in your manga? No! Nah. You like... This woman's on fire. Just upset. There we go. <laughs> and she demands other people to be fired. She demands a rank manager. I'm an elf. <laughs> there you go. Done. <laughs> it looks beautiful. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to draw now. <laughs> wow. This is crazy, Lily. Whoa! Thank you. It's not very good. Show, I'm trying. It looks really good. She's kind. You gotta have, have one of those like summer well, dresses. She has the she has the bangs and then she has the hair. Yes. So let me see, manager. Let me see. Let me see, manager. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lily, you have to do that. Let me see, manager. I'm running. Somebody's running away from her. Oh! Uh, <laughs> my face. <laughs> <laughs> This is Lily. Your only your drawings are only getting better. I swear to God. <laughs> you think? Oh yeah. I thought this one wasn't that good. I had a better picture in my mind. It says as the flames okay. are going inside that bystander. <laughs> yeah, he's and you scared he Rowan off. Like Rowan was so scared, he just ran away. He's gone now. Yeah, he's right. like, oh, now. He's calling the police on you. <laughs> <laughs> I need help. Help. Ew. Like, All right. Let's get pumped up. <laughs> okay. Pumped up. Uh-oh. What was that, it Jack? Says, my what internet that? connection is unstable. Uh, I'm sorry, but Rowan's I'm sorry. I mean, I've already won. This is You're already won, so. <laughs> this, 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 this. Sorry, yeah. I guess you can count this as like uh, two to one point five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want you want to plug anything? Oh, yeah, uh, um, you can find me at many of my social medias. I have a plethora of them. Most of them are under Lily Gutman. Um, if you want to, you can also follow my photography page, which is Lily Gutman Photography on Instagram. I've got lots of pictures, including Rowan himself for his senior photos. I took pictures of that man. Aww. But yeah, <laughs> there's some pretty good ones, and I'll be updating it soon, so be sure to check it out. Okay. <laughs> All right. Rowan, you go. Okay, guys. Uh, as always, you can check us out on YouTube, Facebook, um, on our website. On the internet. On the internet. <laughs> As dude, I just drew <laughs> on all of the internet. <laughs> dude, I just drew on all of um, the if internet. You wanna, if you want to find my work, you can find me on Instagram at nowhere.arts and Twitter at nowhere.arts. You can find my webtoons on webtoon uh, with nowhere with an exclamation mark. That's me. Cool. If you would like to see my work. But anyways, uh, good episode, guys. Good episode. It was a lot of fun. It was good. It was good having everyone here. We'll see uh, you sometime next month, right? Yeah. yeah see you, see yeah. you guys. See you guys later. We'll do it again. Yeah. Goodbye. So, bye, bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>